Soybeans, that's the subject of this week's U.S. Farm Report. Recent sales successes by the Grain Commodity Department of NFO. The orderly marketing of soybeans. Upward price pressures that result from such marketing. These are some of the features of today's show, so stay tuned. everybody and welcome to U.S. Farm Report. My special guest this week is John Oster, who is assistant to the director of the Grain Commodity Department of the National Farmers Organization. John, it's always a pleasure to have you on our show. Thank you, Bill. I understand that uh, the Grain Commodity Department uh, has really been making some strides of late in soybean sales. Tell us about this. Well, we sure have, Bill. <clears throat> it started last fall when we made a large sale for export, half a million bushels for export. Combined along with that was a supply contract to a processor in the interior of the United States. At that time, uh, beans were selling at harvest time for harvest delivery under the new loan price of two and a quarter. And this brought the market price down at harvest time as low as 217, 218 here in this area, mm -hmm. and in some areas down to 222. I brought along a chart today, Bill, to show approximately what happened. Last year at harvest time, beans were selling from the combine from 218 in this area to around 222, or approximately 220 overall. Mm -hmm. A loan price basis on number one soybeans of two and a quarter, cash price for sales, 220 per bushel. We made a sale for export, started delivery in January, and as we started the delivery, the price continued to move up. And all during the delivery, the price stayed above our sale price, which netted back to the producer 248 per bushel. Stayed above there, and as soon as our delivery was completed on the export sale, the price came right back down. Mm -hmm. And continued there until again, we got back into the market and began to make sales. Primarily, most of these went to the Gulf. A lot of them to interior processors, but most of them to the Gulf until we've seen the price top out now at $3 per bushel at the Gulf. Back here in Iowa, 270 to 275 net to the producer. Well, now, isn't this a prime example, John, of uh, what you call upward price pressure? Definitely is, Bill. Would you explain that in a little more detail? Well, I think primarily what's happening in all commodities, not only alone in grain, but in grain, you've got a country elevator who has his trade area from which he buys his product. Mm -hmm. And over the past years, he has developed uh, a trade of customers who not only sell to him, but buy farm supplies from him. So this is where their production goes. Right. And he can depend and has been dependent upon that supply of almost automatically coming into him. So there's been very little competition in the buying of farm commodities or buying of grain. When we come into the market and we sell this production, this moves out of the area and moves away from this buyer who has had a habit or a tradition of buying. Mm -hmm. So then he's got to find other sources to replace this supply that we move out and thereby create competition and cause the price to go up. As soon as we stop to sell, the competition ceases and the price stays or goes down. And as soon as we do sell, the price moves back up. John, we uh, have a perfect example of this upward price pressure coming up a little later in our show today in an interview with Art Schwears of Lenox, Iowa, who three weeks ago, as will be indicated in the interview, uh, sold his soybeans at Lenox uh, under NFO. Uh, the uh, elevator was paying 253 that day. His price was 259 and a half. Mm -hmm. 
shortly after this particular sale, the price at the elevator went up. This was upward price pressure again, was it not? Yes, the name of the game is to meet or beat the price that NFO can get. By the way, I'd like to just ask you a question now. I'm very bad at mathematics, but uh, Art Schwerz is a farmer who produces five to 6,000 bushels of uh, soybeans a year. Uh, now, six and a half cents a bushel doesn't sound very high, does it? No. But when you start multiplying uh, that kind of production by six and a half cents, what kind of money are we talking about? Well, we're talking about, Bill, $65 per thousand bushel. And we speak in terms of 5,000 bushel, we're talking about $325 more that Art is going to realize in the sale of his mm -hmm. beans by selling through and with NFO right. in a collective bargaining program. Right. In addition to that, this is if he only got six and a half cents on all 5,000. But we hope that he sold 1,000 at six and a half cents, probably another 1,000 at maybe 263. And as I say now, maybe the last 1,000 he's going to sell, he's going to realize 275. Where if it hadn't been for NFO, he'd have probably had to sell the whole 5,000 bushel at 253. So we're not only talking about six, the six and a half cents a bushel on the 5,000, we're talking about eventually maybe 20 to 25 cents a bushel more. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily more than he's going to get his local elevator at the time that he makes the sale, but more than what his local elevator is paying now. And without NFO, there is no indication, there has never been in the past and there isn't at the present time, there is no indication that beans would get to 275 or that Arts local elevator would pay more than 253 without NFO. Well, at this time of good sales on the part of the Grain Commodity Department, uh, there's a lot of activity in Corning, Iowa, with uh, soybeans being brought in out of storage on the NFO farms of this area, loaded into boxcars for shipment. Let's take a minute out and take a look at this activity that's going on, okay? Real fine, Bill. <laughs> Observing the soybean loading operation on a railroad siding at Corning, Iowa, a group of economists from the University of Minnesota. These gentlemen are visiting NFO National Headquarters in Corning. The soybeans you have just seen in these loadings came from one farm. Of course, to fulfill this order, to make this sale, Soybeans will be loaded from many farms throughout the area. But let's take just five minutes to visit 
with the NFO member from whose farm these soybeans came. Albert Hedinger and his brother Russell operate a farm about nine miles southwest of Corning, Iowa. Here two fellows who some 10 years ago determined because of the prices they were getting for their commodities that they couldn't do it alone. And so 10 years ago, they joined NFO. But let's uh, have Albert tell the story instead of me. Albert, uh, what first attracted you to NFO, do you recall? Well, I guess I wasn't satisfied with the prices mainly and thought maybe they could help out better than anybody else had. And has that uh, worked out through the years to your satisfaction? We've been marketing practically everything through them. I mean, our livestock and our grain. Uh -huh. And apparently we're satisfied or we wouldn't continue doing it. How big is your farming operation here with your brother? How many acres do you farm? Oh, I believe it's 660 acres, something like that. Uh, grain farming? We get raised quite a few hogs and corn and beans. Yes. Now, of course, uh, we're talking today basically about soybeans. Uh, how many acres of soybeans do you have in this year? I believe it's 180. Is this more than you usually uh, have or about oh, normal? No, it's just one way or the other, a few acres. Uh -huh. Now, we have seen today uh, soybeans uh, being taken out of your storage facilities. Uh, trucked into a corning and put into boxcars for shipment. Um, tell us about uh, these beans now. What crop uh, were these beans actually? 68. 68. We had them stored the government program and we redeemed them and the day I committed them to the NFO, I, uh, or we did, they were giving ten, nine cents more than the elevator was bidding. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was the outcome in your uh, final price for these beans? 262. And how does this compare with the uh, elevator price? Well, it was 253, I believe that. Mm -hmm. Nine cents, as you yeah. mentioned earlier. Now, this has a uh, there's a tendency, isn't there, for uh, NFO to really raise the uh, elevator price? It must be because they've gone up since I committed them a yeah. little bit, <laughs> which. Uh, I'm not sorry of it that it went down. Why I, I was still got my price that I committed to that. Uh huh. How many head of hog uh, hogs are you running here on the farm? Oh, we each one raise about 400 mm -hmm. a year. Mm -hmm. What is your storage capacity total? Oh, it's 35 or 6,000. Yeah. More than we can raise in one year. Yeah. Well, I think that yours is a prime example of NFO at work in that uh, you and your brother uh, are storing, holding your production, and selling your production through NFO for the price that you're getting. Yeah, I'm, I'm well satisfied. I feel like it's done more good than that nine cents. What was your gross income from soybeans last year, do you recall? Last year we delivered them to the government, and there was twenty thousand and some odd dollars. So, in other words, you and your brother uh, split a, a twenty thousand dollars for yes. soybeans. Now, mm -hmm. of course, you had production costs involved in growing those yeah. beans, but uh, that ten thousand, I'm sure, helped a great deal, and you made a little money. Sure did. But of course, we should have made more, but then uh, that wasn't so bad, I guess. We had a good crop that year, better than we did last year. How do the crops look to you this year? Real good, but we need a rain right now. Now, uh, you have rather hilly uh, terrain here, uh, and you're growing beans on this hilly <laughs> terrain. Is is this uh, normal uh, or not? Do most people grow beans on, on hilly terrain, or, or do they prefer to grow them on flat land? Well, they used to didn't say we should, but then... Uh, that extra 10,000 a year make you do some things you <laughs> don't want to do. But I, I don't think it's too bad. We haven't lost much soil. We yeah. contour everything, and we should have a few more terrace, but we have not too much soil lost. Well, Albert, for an extra $10,000 a year gross, you'd grow beans on a mountainside, wouldn't you? Well, I don't like it too hilly, but I might. <laughs> <laughs> Albert, I want to thank you very much for being one of our guests on U.S. Farm Report. Thank you. Well, John, 
In NFO's marketing structure in soybeans, uh, you talk about orderly marketing. And orderly marketing, if I interpret it properly, means that you market the year round. You don't just market at harvest time. You market the year round. Is this correct? This is correct, Bill. If you're going to be a factor in the market, you're going to have to act as a source of supply year round for the buyers and also to keep the competition amongst the buyers year round. So you're going to have to continue to sell year round and be in the market almost daily, offering your supply available for sale and keep it moving mm -hmm. to be a factor in the market to create the price pressure upward that we want. As a layman, uh, I'm forced to ask what perhaps to you, John, will be a crazy question. <laughs> but let's go back to this elevator situation where the elevator was paying 253 and uh, NFO sold at 259 and a half. John, why should I buy soybeans from NFO? Primarily, Bill, because NFO has got the largest source of supply of any group in the nation today. And the only group that can furnish the volume of supply that the buyers need, both for domestic processing and also, also for export shipments. Mm -hmm. We talk in terms of a processor who's processing 100,000 of bushels of soybeans a week. He needs a source of supply that he can depend on for that delivery to be there when he needs them. Also for the exporter, he wants to buy as large a quantity from one seller as he possibly can in order to cut down his overhead costs. Sure. And meet his commitments that he has in a foreign country. In other words, uh, NFO has the merchandise. We've got the product, Bill. <laughs> That's it. That's the important thing. That's the important thing. And the more farmers that join NFO, the more production that we can block together. Really, Bill, there is no limit as to what farmers can do. They could enjoy full, fair prices almost immediately if enough farmers would join and block their production together and simply put a price tag on it. And this is what all our efforts are about creating this competition in the market, demanding that we get better prices for the product we have, and also the volume that we have is worth a premium over and above a 1,000 bushel sale, mm -hmm. for example. It's much more convenient for the buyer if he can buy 100,000 bushels at one time rather than go out and purchase a 1,000 bushels from 100,000 different buyers. John, you've had some uh, recent good successes, too, in grain sorghums, haven't you? Yes, we have, Bill. Uh, I'm real pleased with those. Uh, we went down to Texas in May, I believe it was, and tried to make a sale to the port buyers along the Gulf there at Houston, mm -hmm. Corpus Christi, and Brownsville. And the price they were offering was 205. This was delivered to Houston. And at that time, we were still delivering old crop for export in the neighborhood of 228 to 230, 100. And I asked the buyers, why then are they buying a new crop at 205? And of course, their pat answer was, as always we get, well, if we don't come down in our price, then we're going to sell it to Australia. I think what most farmers should realize is that the buyers that are buying the product today, and especially for export, are not very much interested in what they pay farmers in getting fair prices for farmers because they handle the merchandise on volume. Yes. And the more volume they handle, of course, the more money they make. So they're not interested in price. But recently we had an inquiry from an export buyer wanting to buy 25,000 long ton of grain sorghum. We made the sale. And this particular sale is going to met back to the farmers back in Texas around San Antonio on up to Waco in that area. It's going to back to them from 10 to 14 cents a hundred more than what their local buyers are paying or more than what the port elevators are paying. And yesterday I sold another sale which is going to be well over a million bushel and it was five cents a hundred higher. We will blend the two prices out now so that all the producers will get the benefit of the increase in price. That's wonderful. So we're real pleased with it, and so are the farmers in Texas. And we're looking forward to making some more sales yet to these export buyers, not necessarily this one, but to other ones for better prices yet. Well, John, the Grain Commodity Department is to be congratulated. Thank you, Bill. As well as these good NFO members. They're to be congratulated for having the good judgment to be NFO members right. and to block their production and sell their production with NFO and get this extra price. This is the backbone, That's and it. if the farmers put their production together, there's no limit to what we can do in terms of creating better price. We met a wonderful NFO member, and I know he's a friend of yours, Art Schwears. Yes. 
And we're going right now to his farm at Lenox, Iowa, and have our U.S. Farm Report viewers also meet Art Schwerz. Real good, Bill. Art, you know, on U.S. Farm Report, we talk a great deal about the family farm. And uh, certainly yours qualifies as a family farm <laughs> in as much as you have 11 children. How old are right. they? Oh, they range from 28 down to 10. Well, then you have some married children, don't yeah, you? Yeah, we've got four married now. Oh, well, wait a minute. we got three married, and one will be married in August. I start counting her already. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to keep track, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yes, However, sir, they're all girls that are married. Well, I can so. see where you have to stay a little busy, man, uh, <laughs> on this farm to uh, to keep food on the table. Keeps you young. How, uh, how many acres are you farming here? We're farming 820 acres. Well, are you growing mainly corn and soybeans? Oh, we're about half crop, corn and beans, and the other half is grass and hay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, uh, you're running uh, some cattle. Yeah, we're running right at 100 cows right and, now. Uh, you have been in the hog business, but you're not in the hog business now. Well, that right? that's right. I was out a couple of years, getting back in again now. Why are you getting back in, Art? Does it look better to you? <laughs> yeah, it looks better, uh, of course, I suppose. I'm like I am too often, uh, maybe one step too late, but, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I've got confidence enough in our organization that uh, I think these guys that are talking $17, $18 hogs are going to be surprised again. Mm -hmm. We've surprised them quite a few times in the last four or five years, and oh. I think we're going to surprise them again. If, if I didn't think that, I wouldn't be having hogs. Again. Yeah. And I've got 55 gilts, so I'm going to be in her deep enough to she's got to work you're going to give it a good taste <laughs> yeah, right well how's the crop situation they're they're looking good uh, your crops they're, look good as we came uh, came to your place today they they're looking real good uh they looked a lot better a week ago but uh we had too darn much right next to 100 degree weather in here and uh it hurt us it or i think it hurt us it rolled the leaves awful tight yeah. our corn is just starting to tassel and uh there are very, very few silks yet. So uh, from what I know about it, it's the silk that hurts worse than the tassel. Mm -hmm. So if uh, uh, if this is right, why now it's cool this week. Maybe we're back in the money yeah. again. Beans looking OK? Beans are looking real good, yeah. yeah. Just starting to bloom. Yeah. They're just about knee high and just starting to bloom. Well, now, you mentioned a little while ago as we were visiting, Art, that uh, you dig down a foot or so and you've got some moisture. Yeah. But you do need rain, don't we you? We do need rain, yeah. You can uh, you can still bring up moisture with the cultivator, or I could the fore part of, or the latter part of last week. But, uh, so it's, it's close, but mm -hmm. it's just that terrific heat makes mm -hmm. it roll on yeah. the corn. Well, now, we're talking about soybeans on this week's U.S. Farm Report. You're a soybean man. In fact, three weeks ago, you uh, sold so uh, soybeans at Lenox. Uh, what did you get for your beans? We got 259 and a half that day. Well, now, tell us about this. Uh, what was the elevator offering uh, that day? Well, there's quite a little variation around, and that's, that's a little hard to understand. It run from 250 up to 253 was the top price I could find. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we got 259. Of course, that was delivered to the uh, rail, but uh, the other price also was delivered. Mm -hmm. So there was no no variation there. Well, as, you had a little conversation with your elevator man about this. Would you like to <laughs> repeat that for our audience? <laughs> well, he gets a little irritated with us, uh, <laughs> and I'm sorry about that too. Uh, I like the man. I like to do business with him, but he. Uh, he buys our product, he aims to make his profit off of it, and I can't quite understand why he don't want us to have a fair profit as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, after all, that's all we're asking is a fair profit. Art, uh, three weeks ago, you received at Lenox six and a half cents above elevator price. Now, exactly what happened in the uh, price structure at the elevator after that? Well, price started coming up in... Uh, Oh, this last week, beans got up to uh, 267 or 68. Uh -huh. I'm not real sure which, uh -huh. but uh, they were they really got up there. 
Well, in the marketing structure of NFO, uh, this is referred to, I think, as upward price pressure. And it seems to happen every time, doesn't it? It sure does. Never fails. Well, now, as you're aware, NFO tripled its dues to its members this past year. Now, on this uh, price advantage on the beans you sold three weeks ago, you more than paid for your year's membership in NFO, didn't you? Yeah, that'd be right. Yeah. That'd be right. I was, was for that 100%. Right. For the increase. I'm, I believe it had to be done. Uh, they won't any organization run without being properly financed. This is I the can't, truth. can't run my farm without that, and if I didn't have a good banker, I couldn't do that. So. <laughs> Let's talk just a minute about uh, the old days. Now, you've been farming most of your life. Uh, what was the marketing system in the old days before NFO came along in soybeans, for example? Well, I know in our case, we didn't have any storage at all for... Uh, for anything other than ear corn. And when uh, when we got done harvesting, or we harvested beans, it went to town load by load. And uh, it was a matter of take what you could get. Yeah, yeah. The old story, what will you give me? Right. Well, now, <laughs> with NFO's marketing structure, it's uh, a bit different these days, isn't it? Yes, it is. And tell us about that. Uh, well, we're, we're on a deal. Ooh, that book. They're uh, bad right here. Yeah, aren't they, they are. Uh, well, it's it's a deal of where we're going to have our beans sold. We're going to know what we're going to get for beans on some of them, and on the rest of them, we're going to try to have storage enough to accommodate the rest of them. And uh, I hope we're going to be able to go through a sealing program to, uh, if we need money to pay the bills in the fall, mm -hmm. to get money and then be able to sit on our beans and hold them until such time as we can read it. Well, you have the storage capabilities. You uh, you hold together. Right. You sell together in right. NFO. And uh, you sell in a, in a manner that uh, is called orderly marketing. Right. Uh, soybeans are, are sold throughout the year instead of all dumped on the market at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that's about it in a nutshell, isn't it? That's, that's the main story right there. Yeah. Well, now... Looking at the overall farming picture, it seems a little simple to me that uh, the way to whip this thing and get price for the farmer is for all of the farmers to get together, as you NFO members are doing, and uh, get this job done. Would you agree with that? Oh, 100%. John, I want to thank you very much for being my guest today on U.S. Farm Report. It's been my pleasure, Bill. It's always nice to have you with us. Thank you. It's always nice to have you with us, too. U.S. Farm Report is seen each week at this same time on this same station. Until we meet again, so long, everybody.